Do you need help with English? <laughs> Eastland English. Welcome back to Eastland English. I'm Robert. I'm Yudi. This is our English phrasal verbs test tutorial number one. What are phrasal verbs? Good question. Phrasal verbs are verbs with two or more words together as a single semantic unit. That means that the two or three words mean something together. They're usually a verb and a preposition or an adverb, but sometimes you get a verb and an adverb and a preposition all together. Phrasal verbs are often idiomatic, which means that they cannot be deciphered or solved by using the meanings of the individual words alone. There are many thousands of them, so it's necessary to understand them as you will likely encounter them often. Directions Choose the best answer to complete each sentence. As usual, we highly recommend that you choose your answer before we give you the answers or give you any clues. Number one. Almost everyone in the class seems to be progressing nicely. On the other hand, Ward needs to change his study habits in order to blank. A. Show up. B. Hold up. C. Pass up. D. Keep up. As always, we're going to highlight some of the key words in the stem sentences just to help you understand them better and also to help you solve for which choice should be in the blank. In the first sentence, we have almost everyone, which means not everyone. Progressing nicely means doing well in class. The phrase, on the other hand, introduces a sentence that should be opposite in value. So what does Ward need to do? Now let's look at the choices. Hold up could be used for a bank robbery. Pass up means to not take. Although show up could possibly be used in this situation because it means to represent or attend, it's not the best answer. Keep up means to stay at the same pace or to stay at the same speed as others. It's the best choice. Let's hear number one the way it should be. Almost everyone in the class seems to be progressing nicely. On the other hand, Ward needs to change his study habits in order to keep up. Number two. No one was guarding the supply room last night, so someone blank and stole all of the ink cartridges. A. Broke in. B. Broke into. C. Broke out. D. Broke up. Because there were no guards or no person guarding the supply room, someone took something illegally. We're looking for a phrase that is associated with an illegal action. Broke up means to end a relationship. Here it's used in the past tense as all of the verbs in this question. Broke out is another way of saying escaped. Either broke in or broke into could be used. However, broke into requires an object to follow it. For example, broke into the storeroom would be acceptable, but you can see in the sentence there is no object for this clause. Broke in is the correct choice. The full sentence for number two is... No one was guarding the supply room last night, so someone broke in and stole all of the ink cartridges. Number three. Our printing company did not deliver enough flyers in the last shipment. Last night we blank of the ones for the walking tour. A. Ran over. B. Ran away. C. Ran out. D. Ran into. In number three, the tour company did not receive enough Flyers. A flyer is a piece of paper that is an advertisement or promotion for something. It could be a product, but in this case, it's for a tour. So what likely happened if they didn't get enough flyers? 
Ran over means to go more than, so it's clearly not the best choice. Ran away means to flee or fled. Option D, ran into, means to have met without expecting to, or encountered by accident. Option C is the best choice. Why don't we hear number three now? Okay. Our printing company did not deliver enough flyers in the last shipment. Last night, we ran out of the ones for the walking tour. Number four. There are too few scientists available to engage in this project. Therefore, we will have to blank this research until further notice. A. Put up. B. Put behind. C. Put in. D. Put aside. To paraphrase the first clause, there aren't enough researchers to do the research therefore introduces the result of that problem. Both A and C mean to contribute. However, if you add the word with after put up, it would mean to endure. Both options B and D look like they could be used, but there is another key phrase that will help us. Until further notice means that we are planning to do it in the future. On the other hand, put behind means to not do in the future. Put aside means to postpone something until later. Put aside is the best choice here. The correct sentence for number four is... There are too few scientists available to engage in this project. Therefore, we will have to put aside this research until further notice. Number five. The boss has a very dominating personality, so when he sets a deadline, everyone blank their report punctually. A. Hands in. B. Falls in. C. Holds in. D. Takes part in. Our first phrase of interest is the boss's dominating personality. People usually do what he says. Deadline means the last minute or day that something is due. Punctually is an adverb used for being on time or before the deadline. So what kind of word do we need for the blank? If the boss is a relatively strict guy and people do what he says, what would they do with their report on time? Option D means to participate in. This is an activity and can't really have a deadline. Option C, holds in, is another way of saying retains. Option B is close if it had extra words behind it. We will deal with this phrasal verb in our next video on phrasal verbs. A is the correct answer. Hands in means to send or deliver to the correct person. Now let's hear number five. The boss has a very dominating personality, so when he sets a deadline, everyone hands in their report punctually. Number six. When you do not know the exact meaning of a word, it is a good idea to blank that word in a dictionary. A. Look after. B. Look down on. C. Look out. D. Look up. If there is a word that you don't know and you want to find it in a dictionary, what is the phrasal verb we use for that? Option A. Look after is another way of saying care for. Look down on is a negative phrase meaning disrespect someone. Look down on could be paraphrased with the word disrespect. Look out is a phrasal verb used in a situation where you want someone to be aware of something. Beware. Look up means to search for in a book or a database. Let's hear the correct sentence for number six. When you do not know the exact meaning of a word, it is a good idea to look up that word in a dictionary. Number seven. Only two days after they put up the decorations for the festival, Half of the lights had 
blank. A. Burned out. B. Put out. C. Made out. D. Figured out. The phrase only two days after implies that something did not meet expectations. I'd like to share a little story from my own family history. In our culture, we have Christmas with Christmas trees. On these Christmas trees, we usually string lights around them. One year, we bought lights on sale or for a discounted price which meant they probably weren't very high quality. Sure enough, about two days after we bought them, half of the lights didn't work. This is the phrase that we're looking for in the blank. Figured out is not related. It means solved. Made out has several different meanings, but none of them work here. Put out could be used if it were in the passive voice. For example, had been put out. Because this sentence is in the active voice, burned out is the correct option. Burned out is used for lights that do not illuminate anymore. Number seven should be this. Only two days after they put up the decorations for the festival, half of the lights had burned out. Number eight. My daughter invited all of her friends to our house this evening. They are blank, so that we can get an early start to the zoo tomorrow. A. Dropping over. B. Putting over. C. Staying over. D. Working over. The most important phrases in this sentence are the two time clues. However, even before we decipher the time, we can get rid of two of the options because they're unrelated to recreation. A family has invited friends over. They're going to the zoo. That's going to be a lot of fun. For that reason, D is not a likely option. B is also unrelated to this activity. Between dropping over and staying over, we need to know about the time. We need these time clues to choose between dropping over and staying over. Dropping over means to visit only. It is unlikely that they will sleep overnight when we use dropping over. However, it's clear that these people are sleeping overnight. Staying over is the phrase that we use. Let's hear the correct sentences for number eight. My daughter invited all of her friends to our house this evening. They are staying over so that we can get an early start to the zoo tomorrow. Number nine. This company has some very strict rules, yet we would appreciate it if all employees blank with them to maintain discipline. A. Go against. B. Go along. C. Go without. D. Go over. What should you do with strict rules, Yudi? Follow them. Absolutely. This company wants all of their staff to follow their rules. The word in the blank should equal the verb follow. Option A is exactly the opposite of follow. It means be contrary to. D means exceed. Option C, go without, means not have. Go along is the best choice. Now let's hear number nine. This company has some very strict rules, yet we would appreciate it if all employees go along with them to maintain discipline. Number 10. Please blank that point in the meeting tomorrow. I am too busy to address it today. A. Catch up. B. Bring up. C. Throw up. D. Blow up. In the case of this situation, point means idea or suggestion. We're looking for a phrasal verb that you use for a point in a meeting. Address means to deal with. The boss doesn't want to hear this idea or suggestion today. The boss wants to hear it in the meeting. We can delete two of the options immediately because they are unrelated to ideas and meetings. Blow up means explode. 
Throw up is slang for vomit. Although ketchup could be used with extra words, it's not appropriate here. Bring up means to talk about or mention something in a meeting. The last correct sentence for this tutorial is. Please bring up that point in the meeting tomorrow. I'm too busy to address it today. We greatly appreciate your support. Please subscribe, like, and comment when you have time. Don't forget to click the bell. That way, you will be notified when we release a new video. See you around. See you next time. Bye bye. Bye.